Hi, welcome back to the Pickerton Grace Gallery, and I have with me today Emma Tweedy. Hi, welcome back. Nice to be here. So you are our next artist in the spotlight. So thank you so much for coming in and doing this. Aww. So the artist in the spotlight is a little bit of insight into who you are, what your art's about, mm -hmm. and it gets people to understand your art. And I think we need to understand your art, especially because it is, it's technical, it's beautiful, it has stories. So we'll talk about that. But just before we go into that, a little bit of background. Yeah, so uh, I'm Emma. I have been painting pretty much all my life. My yeah. dad was an artist, so grew up kind of sketching around the house, uh, whatever went really. Yeah. You were allowed to, uh, encouraged to be artistic. Then I went on to art college mm. where I did a foundation degree, sort of lots of different disciplines, printmaking, collage This was work, all in Ireland? All in all Ireland. In Ireland. And then I ended up, um, I went and did a fashion degree actually, a fashion design and marketing degree in wow. Northumbria, uh, which was great because we did lots of textile work, textile uh, projects, things like that, which kind that. of has a bit of a link to some of my substrates that I use now yeah. in my work. Um, and then from there, the old days had to get a job, mm. you know, jobs and art were few and far between in the day. So I've sort of been on this 15 year detour yeah. before I've come back to being sort of what I would like to call a professional yeah. artist. So. Yeah. There That's we go. Enable. So when did you move over here? Well, when did that so I've been in uh, London for best part of 18, 19 years okay. now. Uh, go back home, it's obviously a big inspiration, the yeah. island of Ireland for me. Yeah. So go back a lot, uh, do a lot of research projects there, take lots of photos, but increasingly, uh, again, traveling around the world to find these connection points that yeah. all come up in different cultures but which all kind of have the same tenant about them mm -hmm. and which all are inspiring in the work. Um, and that's really become a, a sort of conversation point of the work as it presently is. So yeah. that's things to do with cultural references, um, views on uh, the cosmos, yeah. environmental views. So all of these things, no matter where you travel in the world yeah. now, I think are really high on the so agenda. bringing that into focus, the picture behind you pretty much speaks about everything you've just said there. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the title, yeah, the title of the piece is Five Finger Strand, mm. which uh, is a remembered landscape. And again, as part of my process, I'm trying to really reach that point between uh, representation and abstraction. And I'm still not 100% mm. there maybe all the time, but it's a really interesting pivotal point. And so with this one, it's a remembered landscape, but the reasons that I remember it are for its outstanding beauty, yeah. absolutely phenomenal, breathtaking place um, on the North Atlantic coast of, of Ireland. Um, but mm. also the environmental touch points, you know, the erosion of the sand dunes, the wildlife that's affected by pollution and plastic, yeah. you know, all of these things I think I've, I have to say something about I mean, even in was, the subtlest of ways with yeah, the work. Yeah, but that was quite, quite horrific what you told me about the plastic because it was kind of a dumping ground. Yeah, back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, you know, there's this very clear kind of marker in the sand dunes where you can see decades of plastic just sitting mm. as sort of coloured, you know, stratas mm. in, the, in the dunes. And again, you know, they're slowly eroding and washing away into yeah. the, the ocean with no one to collect them. So, you know, whales coming up part of the Gulf Stream, uh, seals, dolph yeah. not dolphins, a little bit too cold for the dolphins, <laughs> but you know, them ingesting the plastic and we've yeah. all seen it on Attenborough. Yeah. We know the impact, but just trying to in very subtle ways, you know, tell those stories. And then in this particular piece, there's other threads of things, threads. <laughs> yeah, that's quite a good Literally. <laughs> Running through it. So th there's words, that, I mean. That yeah, so likewise, story. sort of exploring culture. Yeah. And my heritage, obviously, I'm a, a child of the Troubles. So yes. I grew up in Belfast, which was pretty hardcore during 70s and 80s. Mm. Um, a lot of conflict, you know, which again, we're seeing on a, a more global scale now, but mm. actually living through that as well has been really interesting. And um, my father worked part time for a newspaper. So I went to look through some of the archives of stories from my life and my childhood. 
And there was a quote that sprung out at me from Nelson Mandela, which was talking about the fact that the violence uh, in South Africa and the apartheid was actually less violent than some of the violence he had witnessed in Northern Ireland, mm -hmm. as, it, as it now is. And that really struck a note with me. So again, my work is very much about mindfulness, feelings of peace, that kind of liminal feeling which you get from looking at something which you really want to relax with. Yeah. Um, and that's also a really important thing for the viewer for me, uh, a point of escape. Yeah. The, the landscapes themselves are the spaces, mm. but I like to think of the paintings as uh, keys to that world. And your work is mostly landscapes? Mostly landscapes, again, as part of my development, I am doing more abstraction mm. with color, things like that. But yeah, yeah, they always tend to come back to remembered places. Yeah. Um, and that can be anywhere in the world now, actually. It's not limited mm. to the British Isles or Ireland in particular, it can mm. be anywhere. But again, those remembered places where you feel the power of nature and the ability to escape in your brain yeah. from whatever it is is going on in your life. This is such a good example of that. You know, when I look at this as well, you, you are taken to that point. I mean, more, more so for you because you've been to this point and yeah. it's a proper memory for you. A lot of my clients would say, you know, I don't, I love your painting because I went into it. Mm. I'm not sure where I went and then I came back <laughs> out of it again. So that's a comment a lot of people will say about the work. Yeah. So your technique, just talk a bit about your technique. So from a distance, we said as well. Yeah. You know, you're looking at a painting, as you come closer, you see the textures. The yeah, fires. so with my work, I mean, I tend to call these my layer paintings. So mm. whether it's pigment that's layered or mixed media and collaged yeah. elements, they're all kind of layered the nuances within them there's always like little hidden secrets mm -hmm. or little hidden things and um, so again the viewer kind of goes on a journey to find mm. those um, the earlier work that I was making was looking at things like raw linens as part of my practice I try and be as sustainable yeah. with the materials that I use so unbleached linens mm. being able to source where your linens coming from but obviously the Irish history around linen mm. so you can see that in this piece and then, yeah, I'll use things like newspaper clippings, things that are just around or that I've collected yeah. and I kind of hide them in and collage them into the work. So this particular piece has multiple layers. Yeah. There's actually a see. painting on the reverse of the linen, which leaves a tattoo image on the front of the piece. And then I'll kind of build up on the tattoo side wow. of the image so that it feels a little bit more abstracted and a little bit more interesting to the viewer Amazing. than that kind of representative yeah. look. Do you know where you're going when you start it? I mean, with this one, obviously, you had the place in your mind. Yeah, I always start with that memory. And actually, the more I've been painting, I've, I've been painting professionally for six, seven years mm. now. And I think it's that learning to listen. The paintings mm. talk. They talk back to you, they tell you where to go, they tell you what to do. And actually developing that silence for that to happen is actually a really important part of my That's practice. That's a beautiful way to put it. Mm. Mm. So where would we have seen your work before? Where have you exhibited in the So past? I've exhibited kind of widely um, mm. through uh, galleries. Yeah. Uh, also, I do uh, some art fairs, uh, less these days, mm. uh, obviously, because I'm busy making for private clients as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, galleries, you can go online, obviously, through mm. Bickerton Grace um, Gallery, as well as Galleries in Ireland. I also work with some art consultants yeah. who bring clients to me. So. You just finished an exhibition in Northern Ireland? Or yep, is it still so at the moment? I have a gallery that I work with there in Northern Ireland who are amazing. Am I allowed to name drop them? Yes, absolutely. Because they're competitor canvas galleries, they're <laughs> lovely. Of course you can. Um, and I did a show there called Digging Deep, which is all mm. about this land, sea, sea sky, and why those landscape markers are so important for me. Yeah. Um, it's been really successful. Uh, I'm pretty much getting to sold out. Uh, yeah, and amazing. that was just back in October. So yeah. yeah, they've been wonderful. And are you working towards another collection right now? Uh, at the moment, yeah, I've got client orders, which I'm making yeah, and some commissions. So I'm working on those. And then already, because the pieces take such a long time to make, I'm yeah. already thinking, you know, to the latter half of the year for development projects. So yeah. I might be doing um, another exhibition in October, but I just need to check that I don't want to rush the work yeah. or compromise the work. So it will depend on the making schedule yeah. over summer. Because I guess a piece of yours 
especially one like this, can take a very long time. Very you? long. The current paintings can take, if I'm working on them every day, mm. can take two, three months to make wow. a piece. Every, everything is left organically to settle. Yeah. Um, so you have to be really patient. Um, and I tend to work with happy accidents. So I'll have fluid uh, pigments on the pieces, yeah. let them kind of settle, then come in the following day, see where they've gone, and then nice. intuitively work with them. It's such an organic process, it's beautiful. Yeah, very much so. So, for, I mean, obviously, we would love you to come back here and to exhibit here um, soon as well. Yeah. <laughs> we'll fit that into your yeah. bonkers schedule. Um, I just want to mention the sentiment collection as well, yeah. because when I approached you and I said, and you were like, oh, and obviously, it's a wonderful way for us to connect with different yeah. artists and understand different artists. Um, and you gave us the digital um, copy of one of your, is it Ro Roelaine? Roelaine? Roelaine. Roelaine. Yeah. I knew I was going to say it wrong. <laughs> Roelaine, which was beautiful. That was very abstract. Very, yeah. It was pinks and it was just gorgeous. And we'll show an image of that. And then we divided that up. So that became your way of connecting within yeah. the sentiment collection. How was that for you to be part of that? It was really interesting, actually, because different. the word sentiment, even when you start to think about what it means to you, and then, you know, you were saying, have a look at which pieces you think might fit. And yeah. then you're really analysing the pieces based on the emotion that is attached to yeah. each piece. And obviously, I already have a very deep connection with my work. Yeah. Each piece has a different, they're all my babies. Mm. So I was looking at my little family, you know, sort of trying to pick a piece. But actually, that one I felt because I'd abstracted the original painting in a very interesting way. Um, and it felt quite deep you know, mm. layered, because there was layers of abstraction, then obviously layers of colour, but actually when you broke them down into these little takeaway pieces, each one's quite mm. intricate. Yeah. So I felt that that was a good way to give someone a decent piece, yeah. if that makes sense. To be fair though, with all of yours, there's so much detail, yeah. and there's something in every bit. So yeah. anything that you would, had offered would have been the same, wouldn't it? Yeah, really? even when, sometimes photographing the work yeah. is a really, you know, high resolution, really high resolution is a really interesting way to mm. go into little details of the work because even I will miss things and then yeah. I'm always trying to replicate bits that are beautiful within a piece. So, you know, I'm always studying almost like the painting in these little yeah. tiny Do jigsaw you know that, pieces. And that was one of the beautiful things for me to be the one dividing them because so many of the pictures that I've divided up Became, they became little tiny works mm. of art from um, a full work of art. And mm. to see that was really quite precious. Mm. So I was grateful for I that I love well. it when I actually view all the hundred together. I think that installation is really mm, cool. It is, it's a wonderful. Little fragments of people's creativity and well. brains and how people think and work and their practices. And it's just this beautiful yeah. patchwork of creativity yeah I mean it's like you said as an installation in itself amazing the hundred artists it's beautiful amazing um, so obviously this week is all about you so what we want to do over the week is to showcase your artwork and what yep. we've just been talking about so people can see some of your pieces and get behind what made them understand them more yeah and yeah and, and that's also be good because you know as artists our work all always develops, always changes, and actually the work I'm making right at the moment mm. feels a little bit different to the work just yeah. behind. Yeah. So again, it's good for people to understand that journey mm. and that process from certain parts of technical and compositional things that were of interest at one point in time, and then how those are reconsidered and readapted for mm. now. So. And do you not think as well, it's such a takeaway world, isn't it? You know, everything's got so fast. And even what you just said about how long it takes you to do a piece, people need reminding a little bit. You know, oh, I, was reading, I was reading a fantastic, I'm sure like anyone who's interested in art, uh, Rilke, who wrote lots of poignant quotes and phrases about uh, artistic practice. I was reading a little book that he wrote to a chap, I think it's called uh, Letters to a, a Young Writer, mm. something along those lines. Um, but in it, he talks about being an artist and how actually you should never rush its patience because you're never going to be finished with this process. It's in you for life. Mm. And actually to get to the point where you really know what it is you want to say about the work takes a lifetime. Yeah. You know, uh, Hokusai famously said at the age of 96 that he was only just starting to feel like he was getting there. <laughs> so, 
you know, I'm definitely in this for the long term. I don't term. think we ever get there, do No, we? I, do, I don't think we do. That journey. Yeah. That's what makes it so precious as yeah, well. Exactly. Because you're constantly learning. You're always a student yeah. to what's around it's feeding us mm. all the time. Um, but thank you again for coming in today. Oh, my pleasure. You thank you again for the opportunity. It's mm. amazing. And if anyone hasn't been to the gallery, I definitely encourage <laughs> you to come down. It, there's some wonderful things to see here. And also, uh, April the 20th, we've got an exhibition here. You'll be here. Yes. So you can come and speak to Emma and understand even more so. This is on the website, will be on the website. Yeah, and so I think there's see. going to be something else for the launch event as well, hopefully if things dry in time. Yes, which would be amazing. <laughs> so yeah, okay, <laughs> if they dry in time, just bring hopefully. it away. We have had that before, someone <laughs> turns up with a wet painting. Crazy, right. crazy, crazy. But you okay. can also look on the website, bixtongracegallery.com, on Emma's page and have a little bit of an understanding about Emma and see how you can connect connect yeah with her and with us and with all the artists in the collection so bye for now bye for now but we will be badgering you for the week yeah. <laughs> perfect take so, care thanks